This is Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Welcome to Wow, What a Week. Now, some say that our next guest and I have a number of similarities. We've gotten large crowds of diverse people up on their feet. We were both with well-known outfits before being let go of. <laughs> we had some major disagreements with management, specifically senior female management. And after much nagging to do it, we both started our own ventures to do our thing. Here on my venture to talk about his, please give a wow welcome to the leader of Build One South Africa, Borsa, because give Borsa. Make some noise for Musi, my man, eh? <laughs> yes, my dear. <laughs> How you doing, dog? Ah, my man. So good to see you. And I'm, I'm sorry so about, yeah, ah, sorry, the, the mic is in your way. So good to see you. And I'm a big fan. And uh, now I can see why I'm a fan, because we share so many common... <laughs> exactly. Things, we get know? fired by women. Ah. We must start our own thing. Wait. We're both Kaiser Chiefs fans. Oh. In fact, Kaiser Chiefs might or might not be responsible for the colors of your party. You know, you know, you know, I was, hey, man, hey, we, man. when you knew, when you raised Chiefs, you, 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 you touch us in our studio. <laughs> what are we going to do about our Chiefs? No, wait, you know, I was watching Bafana Bafana and I was speaking to my son and I thought yes, to myself. What's your son's name? Uh, Kos. Yes. And I said to him, Chief. You know, not a single Chiefs player yes. would be in the Bafana Bafana squad. Not right like, now. Like literally. Not right now, no. Guru, 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 guru. And he even suggested Ashley the prayer. He said maybe Karen. No, not now. Guru, 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 when you can't produce national players, yeah. how do you hope to high end no? Kosler. Would you say we are blindly loyal or that's what loyalty is? That you, you know, you nail your colors to the mast and that's what you go with. I think when it comes to sport, it's okay to be loyal because I I have this theory that says, Jorge, you support a team mm. that um, that when, was winning when you were young. Oh, yes. So now when I was growing up, because the length of the thing mm. is that, you know, Bo, Ace Kuse, all that generation, we're winning all the time. But in it, like. But the, you know, you know, so I've been there. That's the Chiefs I grew up on. Exactly. Yes. So now when I see these ones, I guess it's not loyalty, it's hopefulness. It's oh, yeah. Sense of going, yes. maybe they will reclaim those glory days, Mare. I know. I, 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 and also, I can't, after all that period, there's also that. You know, so 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 I'm, I, I think I'm a bit, uh, we'll keep hoping. And we can't all go to My Melody Sundowns either. But, my, you know, Sundowns, I want to say this on yes. record, they are like Man City people. Yes. Kibo Mafigi Zolo, and they've arrived, and now they're winning. Time. And now Kibo won. <laughs> so <laughs> let, them, let them have this moment. Jabu Pule uh, was wrapped uh, over the knuckles, uh, I think, uh, late last year, saying... He thinks it's bad for the game that they've got all this budget and they've got a ton of players on the bench and that it's not good for the game. What are your thoughts on that? That's football. You know, yeah. it's, it happens all over the world. I sure. Think, uh, and it's said that football has to be dictated to by money. By budget, the, yes. the, the only league that's got it half right is, is Germany where the citizens of a town actually have a stake in the clubs, oh, which yes. means the funding model means that you really have to get players from the it's a community effort. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. So I think that's what it is. But in South Africa, the way we structure ourselves, mm. money is going to determine what happens. And players themselves. Sure, you know? sure. And it's not unique to soccer only. I mean, you can see it in rugby. You, you know, high caliber players will go play for the franchise that will pay them well. Mm. And so they go. And then mm. the trick that we've got to get right, I think, rather than also being overly invested in players, is to getting local coaches. Because I think... There, there's something. Mm. I mean, if you think about Sundowns, even before they had all the stars, they had Bo Pizzo, yes. and Pizzo took the team to where it is. Yes. If you think about relatively all the other teams. And yeah. and, and many thought Pizzo's leaving, Rulani's in trouble. Rulani's like, no, hold my beer, let me show you. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's, he's done it. And yeah. uh, But, you know, it's also good for football. Sure. Because I think as a result of that, I think we're following... If you've got a strong team, if you've got a strong Barcelona and Real Madrid, mm -hmm. you've got a strong Spanish team. Yes. If you've got a strong uh, Bayern and whatever, you've got a strong German side. Little now, if you've got a strong Sundowns and anyone else, then 
You've got a strong national team. Hence, most of Bafana were sundowners. You know what I mean? So in some ways, give or take, we 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 sub we are supporters of sundowns in laws. Whether we want to or not, we're in laws. Yeah. Laws of sundown supporters. Rebasheva or national team. Absolutely. In fact, speaking of in laws, I mean, uh, this is wow, what a week. So we're going to also discuss this week. Yeah. And one of the things happening this week was Valentine's. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk about you and the Tabile. So the Tabile is a wifey. Yeah. Why did your family give her that name? And what were the other options? You know, I think I think my family got to a point where they were like, actually, what's going on? And then when, when I brought a girl home that they thought, okay, then they said, I had a Tabile. Sure. Um, I think because my wife is Kimutu uh, sure. in that sense. Ah, uh, yes. Very much, uh, we had to have conversations because in a mixed race relationship, mm. with Itawuka, I see, sure. and there's always a sense upon which, uh, given our history, and these are difficult things. Yes, you 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 arrive home, you know what I mean. Yeah. So you got to yes. deal with that issue. You have to deal with the novelty first. You know what? You know, yes. and and so it was great for her to be able to come through. Yes, and uh, Kiki, we we had to say to ourselves, you know, Mamaka is going to offer you tea. Sure, I want you to be the first to 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 go umako mm, deep in this context. Mm. And I knew with one when Neri Logo Finraling the one time and all the women in our home, when when there's a funeral, they go cook, they go. Oh cook. yes, yes. You yes get involved. She, came, she get was involved. standing in a line with me. Hey, my grandmother came and said, my sister, mm. the ladies are there cooking. And yes. I just thought, I realized what we'd made progress is sure. that they could literally treat her and say, you are one of us. You're one of us. So, and I think now that Kiritabile, I think that came from that. Because that's the mistake we, we also make, though, that, you know, there's a, a, a new Mako team being brought into the family. But also because of our history, we often, you know, whether it's a subconscious thing or not, inadvertently treat white people differently. Sure. Even though she's one of us, she's part of the family, she'll all still be treated like, Pass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That that sense of madam mutile, and and of course these things are. I always think racism is a is is on opposite poles of superiority and inferiority. Absolutely. That's why book I see when you drive a car, someone will say ungamla. It's to suggest that you have now amassed up the rank. You've ascended. You've ascended. <laughs> and equally so, I think that attitude yes. we need to be liberated from. And so yes. I was very aware of that mm. and conscious for arriving. Because on the other way other way around, I remember also going to other relatives of hers. Yes. And I would somebody would say to you, Chief, uh, do you guys eat the same food? Yes. And I would be like, what did you think? You almost feel like you're in a zoo. Yeah, yes. you know, like now suddenly there you have to play up to the inferiority question ah, yes. and all of those issues. Mm. So I think one of the endearing features to my own wife is yes. that in that way she has rejected the notion of projecting any form of whiteness mm. and furthermore said to ourselves, I'm just... Sure. And we've had to work with that. Sure. And I'm grateful, Kore. You know, my family... Uh, we had to make the appropriate adjustments and that's mm -hmm. where she's coming in. So you've got to, it's part of the wound we've got to heal yes. as people mm -hmm. to say, when you walk into a room, black or white, you claim equality before you have to claim any other sense. Would you say being married across the color line is a political trump card or does it work against you? It was tough in the beginning, I yeah. one, Because given the history of our country, sure. And funny enough, firstly, in politics, people don't talk about their families that much, mm. right? You've got political leaders, many of them. If your family is brought up, normally it's dragged in. And, and for and the wrong... And, and it's at, never nice. At that point, and it's, it's never... never nice. yeah. it's, you've, no, you've lost the conversation. Yeah. And secondly, I can appreciate, Jorge, amongst... We still, because of our, our wounded history, mm. politically, people would be like... And I... And I and uh, you'd I'd meet a number of black women who'd say, Ronawe, where were we? There's the politics of that. Also. You know, there's the politics of that. Yes. And furthermore, you would find in the politics of arriving in a space, people would be like, I still even see it on Twitter. Sure. Ole, he's in this party. They now had to give him a white wife and all yes, of those. Yes, yes. And so it became 
this tension. Yes. And I realized even subconsciously, mm. we were very much like, no, guys, let's 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 not make this the foregrounding fact. Yes. But I realized or we were wrong. And you can't but ignore it. You can't you, ignore it. We it's, were, like, it's like the DA is saying they don't see color. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to see color. You have to. Yeah. And we were and I remember the first interview we ever did mm. as a family in sure. our talking with my kids and talking with my wife mm. to say, this is who we are. And also for her mm. to allow her to also show her side because I think there's prejudicial issues. Mm. There's prejudicial issues that assumes to be white is to be racist, to be black is to be this and all of those mm. things. Mm. Now let her be able to stand up and say, Bon, like, mm. this is who I am. I also have to confront issues of racism sure. even amongst our own mm. race mm. and challenge those issues. So, so I do think the majority of South Africans, if I give them, I give credit to the fact that the majority of South Africans actually want multiracial society to work. Mm. And it was struck to me when I was doing a door-to-door -door in a taxi rank. Sure. And this taxi guy says to me, and like, where's your wife? And I thought, this is odd. Yeah. Taxi driver asking about my wife. It's sure. like, where do we? Yeah. And then he said to me something profound. He said, Ronamo, in these streets, we sure. want to see races together. And we want to know that for white South Africans to come to a taxi rank mm. is not an abnormal thing. Absolutely. And you need to normalize that in society. Exactly. So, so to me, I think it's a, some ways it's a progress of... <laughs> I nearly said. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a, it's a, it's a celebration of where our country has been. So you guys, as a couple, are Tinzualo. They say. <laughs> a few decades ago, we were committing a crime. Yes, yes you know, absolutely. just as recent as that. Mm. But I do appreciate or re Do we? We also represent. We didn't do it politically. Sure. But I think it gives us a pathway to say to South Africans, actually, there is a way to heal our own woundedness as a society. Yes, sir. You remind me of my uncle. So uncle of mine in the 80s, he worked in New York for a while. So he came home. We're at the village. I think I was 13, 14. And he brings home an American wife. She's white. In fact, I think she was Latina. If I'm not, yeah, she was Latina. And there was just this commotion in the village sure. that my uncle has brought home a white wife. And and even at that level, I felt like, no, man, she's she's just one of us. But she was being treated with these. And she wants to blend in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm home with yeah. my husband. I've come sure. to Africa for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the old ladies want to treat her like, no, she's a class doll. You know, she's a China, she's a yeah. China doll, and yeah. she must be treated in a, in a, in a certain way. Cool. So I'm thinking, that, you know, that's the stuff you had to, to navigate. And and we've had to. Yeah. Um, on And that's what I'm saying. That's on the one side of the yeah. You yeah. can also appreciate what on the other side did, of the Did you ever get hairy on her side of the family? Yeah. I wanna, on the other side of the issue is that you arrive, and, and maybe not so much with the immediate family, but yes. I guess remember... There's always an uncle. In the extended family. Yeah. There's an uncle now wants to say, Ah, Chita. Yeah. Why do you do that? You are yeah. betraying us. You are mm. from her side. Sure. We had people... So you brought us the help. You know what I mean? Yes. We had people who said, we are not coming to the wedding. And like, uh, sure. you, are, mm -hmm. you, you are doing something here that, yes. is, that is not right. And, and, and I think we all fear what we do not know. Mm -hmm. And so we had to invest at saying, Jorge, even in the midst of that pain and that difficulty. Because sure. there were days where you say to yourself, I mean, we got married in the early 2000s. So mm -hmm. the idea of democracy in 94 was still fairly sure. newish mm -hmm. in that sense. There's still that euphoria. You know, there was yes. still, and mm -hmm. ex-model C schools were mm -hmm. not all that massive in the country. And so inter that integration was sure. always quite tricky. Mm -hmm. We had to allow ourselves the grace to say, look, regardless of, because sometimes I think we can immediately slap on your racist label. Sure without willing to confront the question mm. and allow people to grow through it. Absolutely. Because like, I, like, you know, in truth, sometimes we can prejudge situations. Mm, mm. You've got to walk it through. And now we've got kids. We don't, we've got three kids. They've got to navigate it through themselves. Mm. The new identity of being mixed race. They will suffer from some of the critique that Tyler has gotten from the Grammys. Oh, yes. All of those issues. Mm. How do you identify? Mm. You know, even sometimes I see my own daughter putting up posters that say Black Lives Matter. And sure. therefore you think, 
okay, where does she fill mm -hmm. into that space? Mm -hmm. You see your own son, all of those issues, names, yeah. language, so. you know, what language do they first become conversant in? Mm. So you, we, we're going to have to navigate through all of those, all of sure. those things. Yes, sir. One of the other big stories this week, uh, Justice Mohueng, uh, says uh, the good Lord has uh, given me a message that he needs to run for president. Mm. Um, he also spoke about how his life was in danger mm. uh, just last month. He heard that he was supposed to be taken out. How dangerous is what you do? First Look. thing, before we drag the good Lord in, because he's, <laughs> I want to drag him in also. <laughs> I, will, I will not deny it. I, I think there have been moments and Heading into an election is always has its own vulnerabilities mm, mm. because you've got zealots of parties sure. who feel incentivized to a bit like joining a gang mm. that you can take out one from the other gang sure, and show sure. people. So so there is a danger towards that. And I think as the world is becoming more conflictual, mm. you think about the geopolitical conflicts that we are engaged with. Mm. Sometimes you yourself walk around and you think, I represent a particular view to someone. Sure. And so there is on the grassroots level, I've often worried less so for my own life, but more so for my own family. Because sometimes when you take the gamble of going, where's South African family? Mm. You need to keep in mind that your kids find themselves in spaces that you can't protect. In fact, and, uh, Minister Pando was saying the other day that her kids are getting threats now Correct. since uh, the yeah. ICJ thing. Yeah. So so, so that's what I'm saying. And, mm. and, and, and being in spaces that we're in, often has that difficulty when I look at it. Mm. And, and so there is a danger to the to the thing. I think I've had in my own life, mm. periodically, where people have felt, I even had a call from the police commissioner saying, mm. we've got this intelligence, you need mm. to think about where you are, what you are doing, Jeez. all of those things. So, so when you get a call like that, like what's going through your head as you're hearing these things? You, you just... There's a dynamic of Because I can tell you now, me, I'm cucking myself as I'm hearing it. <laughs> if I'm hearing it, I'm like, why did I not wear my diaper today? <laughs> you, you're like, <laughs> I, I, maybe it's a, de it's a degree of faith. Sure. You just think to yourself, we in this thing because we feel a mm. deep sense of call and faith. Sure, sure. I hold on my desk uh, a picture of Mandela's cell mm. without him in it. Sure. Because sometimes I have to remind myself for it. others went through worse. Sure. Sure, I'll get threats, mm. but others went through worse. Mm. Like, like genuinely when I then sober up the discussion. Sure. To say when, when you walk into a place, I was once locked up in a, in a factory. I was busy speaking to someone behind that and a whole lot of ANC supporters mm. I, came and they blocked out the front end of the thing. Jeez. And to get out there, we had to like, literally it was like people could throw whatever and do whatever mm. and it happens. Mm. You have to say to yourself, others have been through worse. Sure. I mean, and that's why I celebrate sometimes those who fought the struggle mm. because there were others who, I mean, you know, I, I, I listened to some of the interviews by people like Mac Maharaj mm. and what took place in, in detention. And when I think about people like Widi Mandela, sure. when I think about all of those, I, my most recent book I just actually read was Johnny Steinberg's book, A Portrait of Marriage, mm. between uh, uh, lessons between Mandela and, and Winnie. Sure. And for the, you know, you realize or there's something about being locked up in prison and mm. being told you can't attend the funeral of your own child. Absolutely. That's yeah. devastating. No, absolutely. And, so, and so when you get threats, you just think to yourself, mm. there are others who have been through this. And if it's worth doing, you have to be willing to face up to whatever the options are. And I was lying in bed last night thinking, funny you asked me this, I was lying in bed last night and thinking, is this worth your life? Is this mm. worth... Is it worth dying for? Is this... Is, yeah, is it? Mm. Is it? And, is it worth dying for? And you have to, with a degree of trepidation, mm. and... Like not, like touch wood. You know, courage isn't... Courage isn't, courage isn't the absence of fear. We've sure. heard that. Mm. Of course, I fear for my life. Mm. But you still have to wake up every day taking a choice to say, it's best to be courageous. Because sure. if you genuinely believe in what you're doing, mm. then be willing to pay whatever price. And if it's the ultimate price, it is. I wouldn't want for my kids to go through it. I wouldn't want for my wife to be mm. to be a widow for fear that she might date someone else. <laughs> no, but <laughs> but, uh, but in the main... 
you have to say to yourself, mm. it's, is it worth the fight? Is it is? And I think for this country, mm. it certainly is. Where do we draw the line between knowing well, the religious society that we are? Where do we draw the line between just vote for me and God said I must stand now? Because it almost feels like a mini guilt trip. You drag in the good Lord into sure. your standing. Sure. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, like for and, and you're, I mean, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're a pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you know, I think to not be preachy, Jesus yeah. has asked the same question about laws and all sorts of things. Mm. And I think the standard response is to love God mm. and love your neighbor. Mm. I think sometimes we can make the position whatever. Sure the the thing that we draw people to say look, mm. at, look at that that's sure. what i've been called to do mm. but actually i think to sum it all up just wake up in the morning and figure out am mm. i loving my own am i loving god mm. and then ultimately am i serving the people because sure. i've had to think hard about that question mm. i've had to think hard about going what if in your all your journey you don't achieve all you've done mm. actually the journey is always the destination, actually, to wake up every day. You know, the things I celebrate the most is when mm. we wake up and we go to a community, sure. we find people without water, we do what we need to do. Mm. You wake up every other day and you think to yourself, there's a child who can't go to school, how do I help that? Or you go to, so there is that loving your neighbor stuff. But also, it mustn't be reduced to just good deeds, it must yes. also be reduced to advocacy, where you say, I hate the acts of racism, I hate sure. the exclusion, so I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to go to parliament and change laws because we love this country. Mm. So to me, I'm never worried about the position so much sure. as taking the posture that says, you'll know me by what I do. Mm. And if you like what I do, then vote for it. But sure. if you don't, you recognize that that's what you're going to get more in droves. For sure. Sure. Now, as a deeply religious society that we are, mm. you'd think the Christian parties would do well mm. in a country such as ours. Why is it that they're not doing as well as they could or should? I think in the main, people of faith mm. wake up asking questions about whether the lights will go on, sure. whether they'll feel safe, mm. whether they will have a job. And when I look at even the biblical heroes mm. you might cite, mm. I think people like, if you take the typical story, Joseph was an economist. Mm. Maybe Moses was the early days Martin Luther King. Sure. The struggle is never just to say, here's my faith, therefore vote for it. Mm. The struggle is always that when people go vote, they hold a referendum on their future. Sure. And you as a leader mm. need to be able to help that without even necessarily waking up and saying, thus saith the Lord. Yeah, yes. People must know you have a need. You know, when you own justice mm. and you say, I see racial injustice, mm. you don't have to say it's because the Bible says so. It's, exactly. You just do it because you genuinely hold the idea of justice paramount or you mm. want people to prosper. But it's not just going to be like automated. Sure. I, that's why I'm always very conscious. I'm finishing a PhD now. Mm. And part of why I do that is because I didn't just think eh, eh, I'll just... I've got to read my own Bible mm. so that when I look at the economics of the country, mm. I can offer solutions that work. One of the indictments, I think, amongst many Christians, Christian leaders, and Christian parties mm -hmm. is that they haven't worked, invested enough at going, what are the solutions for society? Sure, sure. Like, you, how do we keep the lights on? You, you, can't, can't, just, you can't throw the Bible at it. You know, yeah, like, mm. like, how do we keep the lights on? How do we keep people safe? How do we create an economy that sure. works? And, you know, my faith dictates how I look at the issue of humanity. True. I still have to find solutions. I've mm. got to find solutions. And, and I think sometimes that's why Christian parties don't do well is because it's, it's like the age-old saying, and, and I've got to say this, mm. it's fine that someone is a Christian who happens to do plumbing. Sure. But may they be a very good plumber. Yes. Because once the pipes are leaking, we are not going to pray over there. You can't pray over <laughs> You can't say, hey, man, this toilet is blocked. Let's lay hands on it. Okay. Let's get the best plumber to come and fix the thing. Right? And if they are Christians, good, good on. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, but it's important that they are able to fix the pipes. 
tell us about this PhD. It's and, a, and when are you done? Uh, hopefully this year. It's been a journey. I started just before COVID. Mm. Uh, you started a lot of things just before COVID. Hey, man. Even had a COVID child. I did. I did. Well, look, COVID was tough. <laughs> people were suffering. I was watching the scoreboard. You know, as people were dying, I said, what am I doing? What did you do for? for so you decided, what you I decided said, to, what, to add to add to yeah, the population. <laughs> we, what are the others are like, no, I learned how to play guitar. So I have a child. No, I, no, no. I, I tried banana bread and then <laughs> after eating half the banana, I was, I was like, it's not going to work. This I, no, 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 no. We, we fell pregnant before the lockdown. So yeah. it was a shock, but, and a welcome shock. Yeah, absolutely. For, for my little one. But, yes, sir. But we, we would, it's in it's in it's in it's in economics because mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated by by that, and I always think that I'm doing an auto ethnographic study about how politics and economics intersect at a local mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. because you and I, we can debate state capture, we sure. can debate the currency and mm -hmm. monetary policy and all of that, but what we cannot debate is that if a municipality, mm -hmm. i.e. Joburg, cannot fix potholes, keep the lights on, reticulate water, mm. and, and make sure or we are safe. Mm. Those are the things that affect us. Sure. That's where the rabbi does in fact hit the road. And mm. so I just, I've be, that's been the study. I'm I'm about 85, 80% of the way. I hopefully will submit mid-year and then mm. graduate towards the end of the year. So, so that's the big trick. And I also, I had a professor, a Muslim man, Mohammed Jahed, who's mm. one of my favorite South Africans. Mm. He came to me and said, young man, we are not going to vote for a president who hasn't got a PhD. I said, hey, it challenged me. It's like, and that's every time. He, he was the first guy I attended an economics lecture. Yes. And it, like you can imagine, I only finished a master's in theology. And so now I come to do a master's in economics. I'm mm -hmm. there. And he was the first person to say, Musi, you have to do a PhD, PhD. in economics. Mm -hmm. And he challenged me. And I, since to this day, I feel indebted to him to say, I have to do this thing. And like my supervisor and mm. the team that is working with me to make sure that I've been so grateful. They've challenged me. Mm. And I want to do it. Africa has had... On I mean, also, just as a side... Yes, sir. Aren't we all tired of sending people to parliament, Bawana Lady Metriki and all of that? <laughs> like, yeah, like, 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 honestly, I, like, I think we've got to do better. I, I, I think that's probably... Th where we're calling people lawmakers... But yeah, 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 you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like you arrive there, you think, and that was part of the dilemma. When you arrived in Parliament, you sometimes sit there and you say, "Bro, we are debating this issue, but I can hear Horemo mm. again." Yes, and it be and and and, and 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 it has nothing even to do with uh, how well you speak English. No, it's just you're in over your head. Full stop. You That's know, all. The further you study, mm. as someone said. It's the irrational man mm. who is certain. Sure. Rationality makes you uncertain. Yes. The more you study, the more you are willing to hear another point of view mm. that challenges you to say, okay. And the more you understand that gen Correct. generally life is a contestation of ideas. Correct. So let me listen to your idea. So that I'm, conf you know, and out of that, we can synergistically produce exactly. an idea that works for all. Now I got frustrated and I can appreciate when somebody says, under apartheid, people couldn't get a school. So sure. it's okay for mm. someone to go mm. to parliament mm. without a post mm. um, metric qualification. Sure. But I don't think we have that excuse today. If no, we, we don't. We, if we're going to show our kids, Jorge, there must be an aspiration to what they do. We have to ourselves, mm. as leaders, equip ourselves. And also at the same time is that it would be unfair to my father, who I thought was an incredibly smart man. Both my parents are smart, smarter mm. than me. Mm. But thanks to apartheid, my mother didn't complete her uh, own high school. Mm. And my f so, so we are obligated, I think, as the next generation of South Africans to say, where can we stretch this sure. further? So Absolutely. that in our communities, mm. people must be able to know, uh, the, the, if you have a doctorate, you're not just Dr. Kumalo, mm. but you, are, you have a doctorate in, mm. in something. So I've become... A, an advocate for education. Sure. And I had to say to myself, I've got to, mm. I've got to say, prove it, to say I want to get educated so that the next generation can also get educated. Now, Africa has a long history of very educated leaders. 
you know, going back to the time of the OAU, you know, going back to even recent times, whether it's, uh, you know, looking at uh, former President Festus Mohai, who was an economist, mm. or Thabo Mbeki, mm. who was an economist. Mm. Who are some of the African leaders you look up to in terms of, you know, they knew what the heck they were doing. They knew what the heck they were saying. You know, there's a there's a there's a variety of people, mm. and um, you know, I've just finished a whole thing on someone like Anwar Sadat, who, even at the time of leading that part of the world, yes. was fighting for things beyond their time. Mm. They're not all perfect, but they produce something. You know the weird thing. Uh, sorry to to inter yeah. interject because because my dad was in politics and civil service. I read a lot. Yeah. So even at the assassination of Anwar Sadat, I was a child. Sure. But just reading about it, mm. I almost felt a heaviness because I understood that what the heck is going on here, and 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 that's why I appreciate why a reading will open your eyes uh, and your mind to just so much more yeah. and help you understand so much more. And my love for politics, my love for current affairs, my my love for um, um, um you know but talking to people like such as yourself is because my dad made sure we read. That's and 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 we've because, Time Magazine had to read it. I had to read it. I mean, even now, even for my own kids, I have yeah. to say to them, Bona, at least at a basic level, you should be watching the news. Yes. But loudly when you read, I mean, and unfortunately today, you know, smartphones allow us to sure. get things like News Twenty Four mm. and all that kinds of online publications. Like people read. Sure. Um, and so, I probably I've always, I guess, I've. Uh, I, I've had, I always thought I wanted to shake yeah. President Mandela's hand, sure. but I always wanted to sit and have a long-term debate with President Mbeki. Yes. In that, and and I've, I never got to do the first, mm. which is to shake Ma Mandela's hand, but I've been able to have the privilege to engage President Mbeki on a number of yes. occasions and, and to walk away from that. You know who else I'm a, I'm a massive fan mm. and it would seem quite but President Motlante yes. is a South African what a gen. I yeah. admire because yeah. his argument is loud, strong, without him being aggressive. Absolutely. He does produce. Mm. And I've always found when I sit with him, you yes. walk away and you think to yourself, I've learned a mm. lot. Just Even where I might not agree with you. Correct. Correct. And 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 that's the thing about mm. about about so in Africa, I've, I would probably I've had opportunities to to even engage people like Olosa Gano Basanjo. Yes, um, and um, Obi, who was the Minister of Education in Nigeria at the time, mm. is probably one of the more fascinating women you can meet as a woman leader. Sure, it's able to produce just some really insights about education, but probably more than anything, she's spent a lot of time just trying mm. to inspire me about this issue of education. So there's some. There are some. You, you're talking about uh, Anwar Sadat, yes. Yeah. Before I interjected, what, what, what? No, no, no. I was saying. Yeah. If even if I think about the conflict in the Middle East, sure. Anwar Sadat, with his speech that he delivered, mm. demonstrates the courage at the time to have foresaw yes uh, a world without conflict. A, in, in even in some ways, speaking at length about the existence of both Israelis and Palestinians, mm. that was foresight. Sure. Without and now you think about the conflict we have today. Mm. These are incredible people who have chartered away mm. in these issues. Why is it that it's always the good ones that get taken out, though? Like a Sadat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or or, or the ones who speak uncomfortable truths, or or, or, or truth to power, or, or are willing to say to the West, "No, this is wrong." Sure. I think sometimes part of it is. Part of it is, uh, oh, is this just a conspiracy theory? Maybe I'm just a conspiracy theorist. No, I think, I think, I think, <laughs> I think bad people also get taken. <laughs> well, yeah. With all, uh, but the difficulty is that we note the ones mm. that, because I think to, human beings have a, an inbuilt sense of uh, love and justice. Mm. And so when someone says it to us, we take notice of it because it's the closest we have to ourselves. Mm. And then when they get taken out, it hurts us more mm. because we feel a part of us going with that person. Mm. I think we don't always notice when the evil ones get taken out because I think they're just 
so many people, particularly in political leadership, mm -hmm. who are mass positions that we tend to think to ourselves, uh, that's not resembling of us. Mm -hmm. That's not too... I mean, when I think about, even when we take our own democratic history, we take periods of time, there have been some great leaders. There have been leaders... I mean, I entered politics in some ways because... I was as a child watching the gunning down of Chris Hani. Mm. And I thought to myself, this is an injustice that we've got to do. And that's why sure. maybe my first political leanings were part of the ANC and now today trying to reclaim that space of going, how do we build a centrist mm. view of the world and change? So I think... In fact, that was actually my, 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 my next question, that you grew up ANC, but decided, can't fix this from here, so yeah. need to go there. Yeah. Tell us about that quickly. I think because I think liberation movements achieve the job of liberation sure. and fail the task of governance. Mm. And because they fail the task of governance. But why are they not learning from previous liberation movements? Because it's difficult when your identity was steeped in liberation mm. to change your identity. Or is, it, is this hence the nostalgia often? It's, 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 it's a, that's why I still find it strange today that you can find a... You don't have a communications directorate. Mm. You have the Ministry of Propaganda. I mean, sure. I'm like, in what universe are you talking about this? And you still have even political formations that still have fairly Marxist views sure. steeped into them. You, you have this. I, I think the problem is, is that liberation movements don't modernize mm. because it's a change of identity mm. and therefore have to keep reminding people what you are liberating them from. Sure. Despite the fact that the struggle has changed. Yeah. And you have to and and to put that argument forward, you have to say, we are liberating you either a from the whites or a from that system. There must always be a boogeyman. There must <laughs> always be to be able to keep your own cause, your own, rele your own relevance, your own relevance. Yes. And I and 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 to be honest with you, I recognize that if we stay mm. philosophically speaking, we are going to keep repeating cycles of one race oppressing another. Sure. So if you look at South Africa's history, you know, almost at a long-term level, if you say you had a colonialist history, that is one race in oppression to another. Mm -hmm. Apartheid, as Helena Opperman's book says, was like, you know, in her book, Brit almost colonialism's bastard child sure. produced apartheid, which was another recycling of a type of nationalism. Post-apartheid uh, politics means you have one, another liberation movement coming on board saying, we will liberate you from those. We can't then say, what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for the next liberation movement to liberate us from this From one? the liberators. From the liberators. So mm. what we've got to figure out is, as the Kenyans so eloquently put it, at first we must be liberated, and then we must liberate ourselves from the liberators. Yes. Because when we do that, we can introduce a new politics. My, mm. my kids must think about politics differently. They must There must be held hostage. Yeah. And they must participate in politics differently. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not convinced about notions like join a branch, join this. I think the moment you do that, you steep into this loyalism. Nothing is changing. Yeah, and, and this loyalism that says that becomes our team versus your team. And I think the Americans are suffering from that space where they might red team, blue team. No, we must pick what's best for the country. Speaking of which, then, if that's what we want to do, there's a bunch of brilliant young South Africans, such as yourselves, that are now part of either political formations or brand new parties. And my argument is, if it is about king and country, what stops you guys from choosing one of you mm. to stand for it, represent everyone else, and everyone else say, listen, we're here to support you? Sure. Well, I will be a minister if at all we get there. Yeah. But if there's a ton of you, and all of you brilliant in your own right, saying no, me, 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 me. I think it's a system. Yeah, uh, It's a system's problem. Mm. Uh, the current electoral system means everything is proportional. Oh, yes. Which means that in the PR system, you can have everybody mm. going, mm. me, me, me. Mm. But there will come a day after the elections where we will all have to sit down and say, well, who hmm. pick that one. Hmm. Yes. So I think it's more the system allows for a deferred decision rather than one now. Mm. If we had a constituency-based system, on the other hand, which mm. I think Botswana has mm. to a certain extent, mm. 
you can have pre-deals that sure. make it easier to say, Bon, when are you are strong in KZN, focus on that. You are strong in Gauteng. You are strong in the Northern Cape come together. I also think that for South Africans, we need to realize or that conversation is being had, sure. to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I think you'll find there'll be better harnessing of views that mm-hmm. eventually come down to say, the job of electing the president of the country is can't just be done flippantly. Sure. It must be a well-considered view that says, here's a plan, here's how we're going to do it, here's how we're going to bring people together. And ultimately, as the people decide, they'll also be able to go, we think that guys should, because, because I think, maybe this is more the spiritual in me, not everybody mm. who stands up and says, I could be the president, sure. should be the president. In the first place. I think there is a particular, particular moment in a society where the affairs of men are orchestrated to bring particular people at a time True. to lead. And therefore, I think that moment for us as a country is on its way. Mm. I'm confident we'll find each other. Sure. I'm already speaking to political parties across across various spectrum. Mm. And the diversity of South Africa means that you almost have to have a leader who has the temperament to be able to say, you know, for the purpose of this country, I must be willing to hear from an Afrikaner. Sure. I must be willing to hear from a Zulu nationalist. I must be willing to hear from that person so that we can come together around these ideals that take the country forward. In fact, mm. one of my favorite quotes perhaps maybe is from someone like Konrad Adenauer, a German first, who, who dealt with this question of unification, mm. dealt with this question of bringing people together, said, actually, what we've always got to do is that the job of leadership is about figuring out the country's story and telling on the next chapter. Sure. That's what the president does. And so and so for me, I think we've got to find that and say the next chapter of the story of post-liberation politics mm. must be told because if we get stuck in this moment, as the song goes, we can't get out of it. And nothing changes. Nothing changes. Right? Nothing changes. And the truth of the matter is, as a country, we're suffering mm. because as the president articulated at Sorna, he painted a beautiful vision of a better yesterday. Walking away from the speech, I couldn't think, what is my tomorrow going to be? Mm. Therefore, in the light of all of that, we have to arrive at a point where we say, what is the tomorrow we want? We can't, as much, I love my parents. I don't ever, I, I can't produce a better dream for them sure. at the expense of my own kids. Absolutely. If you were tasked with advising President Ramaphosa pre-Sona, how would have Sona gone? If you are going to use Sona as an election speech, sure. elections are always a referendum about the future. Mm. On balance, you can't have a speech that says, congratulate me. I thought it was a tribute speech to President Mbeki more mm. than anything. Mm. So it was like, hey, you know, I, and I think that's what he got wrong. Yes. I would have said to him, forget, let, let someone else tell the story of 30 years of democracy. Yes. You have to. Bring Tintolo in. Let someone else tell it. Let, let, tell it. So, let someone else tell it. What your job must be is to tell us what the next 30 years is going to look like. Yes. And I think he failed at that basic task. Sure. Because none of us are going to go to the polls and say, we thank you. In fact, many of us are going to go to the polls and say, mm. well, we've got load shedding, we've got this, we've got that. Those are the challenges. We are unemployed, so mm. we need to find people. The job now for South Africa, we've transitioned. Sure. What does South Africa 10 years, 20, 30 years from now look like? Mm. And whoever owns that will own the future. Yeah. And I thought the president said, I don't own that. And and that's a function of age. So wh- function- wasted opportunity. The opportunity has been able to articulate that. Mm. And, I, and I think that's where for me, I've had to, as tough as it is, to always say, I see a South Africa where South Africans, regardless of race, can prosper together. Mm. There must be a South African where, when we talk about shared prosperity, more people find work. Sure. We must build more infrastructure. We must ensure that tomorrow our kids are educated to compete with anyone. And in a world that's fast digitizing, mm. how do we ensure that our citizens are much more able to compete with anyone in the world thanks to a quality education. We're not left in the dust by the Kenyans. I mean, the exactly. Kenyans are streets ahead. They are already innovating on payment platforms, etc. We are falling behind. Yeah. And yeah. so we need to be intentional about what does that tomorrow look like. And I, and I think that's, the, that's, that's actually the task. 
Now, I'm aware that you've got time constraints, and I think even your management are saying, uh, you need to wrap up. <laughs> you have 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes. We need to leave soon. Bossa. Yes. Why do I need to vote for Bossa? What are you guys going to do differently? Like, what makes you guys... It's, al it's already what we've been doing to Yes. Yeah. One, I left parliament because I thought it was politics for politicians. Sure. I didn't want to start another party because I didn't want disgruntled people following me and mm. say, we are angry there, let's start mm. here. <laughs> I said, mm. let's go out first and foremost and identify, let's get back to the communities. Sure. So we fought the Electoral Act mm. to say, let's allow for direct elections of people. Secondly, we've identified unbelievably talented people. Mm. You know, for me, the pain in this country is that we don't have ethical leadership sure. serving in parliament. Mm. We found some unbelievable talent. Mm. I mean, many South Africans would be introduced to Ayanda Ali yes. in a more recent one. Mm. But Ayanda is like, you know, drinking, taking a sip out of a fire hydrant. She sure. is a force. Yeah. But I can tell you that along with Ayanda, there's Nobuntu, there's Lumka, mm. there's people like Kathy, there's so Tanya. There, I can list a whole lot of women mm. who, when I look at, I realize there's an unbelievable talent. When I look at the candidates we've that communities have given us. Mm. We didn't go say to them, sure. even the ones who are in state capture will appear. Ah. Mm. We went to the community and says, pick the best, sure. and they gave us the best. Mm. So that's the first. The second is, we've genuinely shown what it means to be a government in working rather than waiting. Mm. So I've invested a lot in communities fixing balls. We've set up blended learning uh, education facilities where mm. people can come through. I myself left parliament and said, I'm underskilled. Let mm. me go reskill myself. Sure. So I did, the study is but one thing. But I got involved in business, mm. right? Mm. So we set up a fund to help fund startup businesses. Mm. But we also were intentional at going, how do we help entrepreneurs come forward? Because I don't want to talk what I don't experience. Mm. So mm. now, in myself, I'm coming back with a new toolkit. So mm. to answer your question, I think when you look at the ballot, mm. You are going to see black parties. You are going to see white parties. You are going to see Indian parties, colored parties. Mm. They may not call themselves like that, sure. but they certainly represent some form of biological feature to which none of us can change. Mm. With Zulu parties, regional parties, religious parties. Bossa is about the only party I can say comfortably. Mm. When you find us in the ballot, you'll find a South Africa for all, Mm. you'll find that those South Africans have a shared vision of a prosperous South Africa that delivers jobs. You'll also find, mm. in the midst of that, that the most ethical leadership sits there. Mm. That, for me, is a powerful cause to fight for and a powerful cause to maintain for the future of my own kids. In fact, speaking of the future of your own kids, in terms of education, what would you guys do differently? We've been, I've said, Let's scrap this 30% thing. Mm. I know people are like, why? Because when your scoreboard at the end of the day says mm. mediocrity, sure. everything else follows suit. Mm. Your teachers settle for mediocrity. Your headmasters settle for mediocrity. So it's a mindset thing. It is. Mm. I mean, if we learn anything from, you would know Botswana very well. Mm. Botswana, we're very intentional about educating citizens. Mm. Let's, mm. I grant them that. They were, mm. and, it, and when they didn't have always the universities for it, I can remember going to universities in South Africa mm. through a bursary program called Botswana where they forced and mm. funded people to get educated in this They country. were sent pretty much to every corner Everywhere. of the world. And you could go to Harvard and found mm. Botswana, you could mm. go anywhere. Mm. Now, that was leadership that recognized the fact that if we're going to move up the curve, we have to educate our citizens. Mm. So for me, I'm going... Let's scrap that. Let's make it 50. Sure. Let's make sure we build the appropriate infrastructure. We can't be discussing today kids dying in pet latrines. It's, mm. it's crap. I mm. mean, said another word mm. that, um, but I won't. But we equally so have to say to ourselves, how do we get, um, let, let alone the teaching component right, mm. how do we ensure that infrastructure, digital infrastructure is put on the table? How do we offer an education ombudsman who can mm. monitor what happens that mutes in some ways the power of, of unions to electing principles. Sure. And let's ultimately produce an education for the future mm. that then says the kids have a pipeline. Because sure. here's a dilemma. Mm. If eight out of 10 of our kids cannot read for meaning mm. by the age of 10, that means their matric pass rate becomes meaningless. So mm. let's make sure in the first thousand days, kids are well fed, they've got proper ECD centers. Let's, let's 
pay teachers better, mm. particularly those in the STEM subjects. Let's give a national civilian year post school so that in that post matric year, kids, young people have got an opportunity to go work and in an internship program because we're not always mm. going to all go do a university degree. I was, I was part of a similar one in, in BOTS. Yeah. Um, straight out of high school. We had to do national service for a year. Correct. Cool. And it was compulsory. Yeah. But uh, what the way it worked is, do your national service, we're going to send you to school. Sure. And that gap year did a ton for me. Because I'm working in a community I've never worked in before. Yeah. I'm giving back to the country. And I'm also taking a gap year to actually find myself and to develop a work ethic outside of just the schooling system. Cool. And you share values, yes, right? Absolutely. Because in a fragmented society, sometimes you can find... More... You want a child who's grown up in Santon to go work in Alex. Yeah. So that... To spend a year working in Alex. Yeah. Hey, so that when they stand up and, and, you know, in South Africa, we have others who celebrate Springboks, others who celebrate Bafana. We need all to celebrate the Springboks, sure. all to celebrate Bafana, all to celebrate Tyler. So because it's part of that national... We're on the same boat and exactly. if it sinks, we all die. We all... That's there, it. there are no compartments for who's going to die first. Well, you can't say Babo Stelem Boshia... Yes. Uh, they don't have like a separate arc. Why they are they the same arc? No, exactly. So, yeah. so, so, so it's about that shared values dis discussion that allows in that year's program and then post that mm. to be able to say if there's a student who, whose parents could not go to university mm. because of the history we come from, sure. we as a state must be obligated to fund it, mm. but not only fund it, recoup that cost when they get their first job. Because sure. once they get their first job, you can increase their taxation by a few percentage mm. points. And they can pay it back. Back into the kitty. For into the, the next. kitty for the next one. So that you keep your end of the bargain, which is to say, so more pass and get through. And we keep our end of the bargain sure. to say, your education must be deployed in the economy. Mm. And so we keep going. Sure. Now, I often hear people talking about there's a genocide, white farmers are being killed. There's also the, there's GBV. And my argument always is, I'm not going to take anything from anyone who feels white farmers are being targeted or people who feel GBV is a problem. It is a problem. But I generally feel we have a bigger issue here. We have a violence problem. Exactly. Regardless of who you are, we are all under siege. We have a violence problem. And if we were to look at the stats, um, you know, what stops a guy from saying, actually, as a black male, more of us are being killed every weekend than any other... Uh, part of... Uh, 70 uh, to be exact, to be killed every single day in this country. This is just black males. Se kur kur kur, murder in general. In general and and yes. then I, I, I would imagine black males fulfill a larger proportion. That's, that's the point I'm making, that, you know, depending on uh, which team you want to bat for, we can all argue that someone is under siege. But the bottom line is we have a massive violence problem in this country. And sometimes even tagging labels like genocide and all of that yeah. is to give those who are committing that crime and murder mm. the dignity they don't deserve. Absolutely. It's, it's a bit like you mm. make them mercenaries, yes. like they're yeah. fighting some mm. cause. Mm. What crap is that? Mm. The truth of the matter is that you are correct. What we need we to have fix. a violence problem. Mm. We have a murder problem. But to fix, we have a equally a policing problem. Sure. Police are underfunded and understaffed. Mm. We are we have a deficit of over 100,000 police. What I think we need to philosophically think about it this way. Mm. We need to say, how do we decentralize policing, move away from the SAPs and bring them to lower down? Sure. That's important. Why? Because intelligence. Mm. We're not being murdered. We're not creating new murderers every day. They're not someone from outside. It, we, it's your neighbor. We, we, have, we, know, we need the intelligence mm. to know, but we also need to know once we've got that intelligence, how sure. do we cooperate with the criminal justice system so that those people end up behind bars? Sure. That's the first. The second is we can then add the manpower. I mean, I drive around Joburg and the Metro Police stopped me just to check my license disc. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what a waste of manpower. Sure. Why can't we use that manpower, merge it with a localized policing system, allow for private security to be partnered with that sure. so that we can deploy an immediate amount of force quickly and effectively mm. when a crime is occurring. Mm. And then to the National Civilian Service issue, you augment that with more young people who can come and volunteer and do work. Now you've got more eyes on criminals. It's closer to the ground. You are increasing capacity, but you have to prioritize murder. And I think that's a good place to start because sometimes when a police detective is confronted with a motor vehicle accident, they are confronted with, mm. ah, 
Vacha Bigi, mm. focus on murder. Sure. Let's go to that. And we saw mm. when we do those little things, even though we didn't change constitutionality of policing, mm. murder rate in this country was lower in 2010, just before 2009 to 2010, just before the World Cup, because mm. we capacitated it. Sure. And if you can remember, mm. during the World Cup, Nerozama, you see Maberete, you see these ones, there was a sense upon which there was this a country, presence. There was a presence. There, there was a don't mess around. Wabon? Yeah. Don't, yeah. Now, today, mm. In truth, people, the, the only people living in fear are citizens. The criminals are walking around mm -hmm. being emboldened. So, so, so I do think we need to be intentional about that issue. Mm. And, and as the measures I've put in place, sure. I think we could be able to see much better return on it. To NHI or not to NHI? I'll produce a third model, which is sure. to let the state be the underwrite. Right. Sure. Because actually... Both assets, public and private, mm. are crucial. Sure. But let's say you live in Limpopo mm. and the closest doctor to you is a private medical doctor. Let citizens go there and let the state pay. Ah, yes. Because it underwrites the issue. Sure. But let's assume you live in Cape Town mm. and the best liver specialist happens to work in Khrotiskir, a public institution, but mm. you're a private medical aid client. Sure. You must go to that asset mm. and that asset must be able to you must be able to pay through your medical aid to the public coffers mm -hmm. so we keep at a primary level of health care availability of services to all citizens mm -hmm. and at a tertiary level we can make sure that the payment platform is underwritten by both the state and your medical aid provider mm -hmm. so that we can benefit so i do think it's we've got to build that model and we've got to allow the underwriting of services more mm -hmm. than the sense that all health institutions must be nationalized in closing, and often you hear this on talk shows or talk radio that the country is rudderless, that there's there's no hope that we're the next Zimbabwe. Is it as hopeless as people think it is? No, I don't think so. You know, to quote someone like Jan Smart, he said, South Africa is the country where the worst never happens, and I guess the, the best is always too distant. Yes. So I, I, don't, I don't think this country is doom and gloom. Mm. I don't. Mm. I genuinely don't. I, I think agree with you. We've got unbelievable people in mm. this country. Yeah, you and I can sit here, we can do this, mm. and we can dominate the world. I mm. just think, Ayanda summed it up well. We don't measure ourselves against developed, developing countries mm. or Zimbabwe. We should measure ourselves against our own potential. Sure. And against our own potential, mm. we are falling behind. Uh, absolutely. And I think that's what we should be saying, Jorge. When I used to teach for a little bit, and mm. sometimes... When you, you can meet a, a student who gets 60%, sure. but that's the maximum they could do. And you meet another student who gets the same 60%, but you know they can get 80%. Yes. As the report would say, does not apply himself. It does, it's not, you know, <laughs> are you reading my report? We, we are not applying ourselves. <laughs> yeah. so, so South Africa is not applying it. You know, yeah. So, so, I, so we're not the best versions of ourselves. And I think not. deep down inside, we know that. We know. We're not. There's, okay. there's, there's no reason why we're not in the top 10 in the world. At anything. Correct. At anything. You know, when, 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 when you, when you, I mean, we shouldn't be surprised Bafana Bafana being in the top four in the continent. At all. But we are, we, 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 and I'm glad, I'm glad they did, but they give us glimmers of saying, Mario, you are underperforming. Yes. Like, we shouldn't be surprised when, we, and that's what I love about this country. In our mm. diversity, sure, it has its stresses, sure. because sometimes we miss each other mm. in language and in many things, but... How Rotswari in rugby we surprise you at soccer? Sure. When you say that we win at the Grammys, when yes. you say that we mm. produce mm. the best healthcare systems mm. or we produce some unbelievable business people. So 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 against our own potential, yes. we could be and I think we were heading that way. Sure. I think we lost our way. Mm. And I think we need to now say, South Africa, imagine if our target was to say, let's at least go back to the Premier League. Sure. Because whether it's financial systems, all of that, education systems, healthcare systems, we've been downgraded to to use football. Mm. That's what we are playing. Sure. We need to, let's just at least say to ourselves, our target for the next five years to get back in the Premier League mm. and then the five years after that play Champions League because mm. we can be in the top 12 nations. And if Japan could do it, mm. they move themselves up the curve, we can do it. And Japan did it with such a s simple thing, we need the best in the correct. Regardless of what that needs to happen, is this the best person for the job? That's yeah. all the Japanese did, and and I, all they did. 
people often ask me, what are you going to do in the first 100 days? Yeah. I say to themselves, almost planning and policy is one thing. Yeah. Attract the best for government. Because they're there. That's all. I mean, think about, you know, you know, I get frustrated sometimes. You go to the home affairs and you get there. And, and I love the uh, civil servants in the home affairs. Sure. You get the order, the system is down. Mm. Think about it. I've never been to a bank. Mm. When my bank goes down, they send warning and red yes, flags. It's a crisis. It's, 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 a, a crisis. it's an hour. Yes. And I've, if I've had that in the last five years, it's mm. been maybe cumulatively five hours. So why are we not using the same system the banks are using? If the banks... Or the same talent they have you know, so that the system is never down. Correct. Do we have the best person for the job I, in I, every position? I think that's where South Africa, we've lost our way. We, mm. we said to ourselves, the state is the best leader of development and then proceeded to send the worst in, in particularly in elected officials mm. to the state. Sure. That's what we did. And then we ended up with a situation where people say, bro, now we are here, but we can't achieve those things. What I'm trying to get to is to say, that's why Bossa, let's sure. elect the best to go to parliament. Sure. Because once you've got the best, they set the tone down. Mm. You've mm. got the best DGs, mm. you've got the best and and then let's 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 minimize certain things. You know, sure. technology allows us to do more mm. for less. Mm. So yes, people say you are driving for jobs, but you are saying no. I'm I'm not trying. The state is what the state is. Sure. But the problem is that you've got people in senior leadership mm. who don't do their jobs sure. and end up in a space where the culture filters down. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's fix. Let's get. Let's get the be We've got the best rugby side, the best soccer side, the best cricket side, the best uh, musicians. Let's get the best government. Let's replicate all of that across every sphere. Suddenly people will say to us, no, Bale, you can't. Because the people are there. Yeah, yeah. The people are there. They're there. And, uh, and more often than not are willing to say, coach, put me on. That's all they want. Coach, put me on. And we can't because some, sometimes we have to say to them, belong to this party. Yeah. To this. yeah. Let's free. Let's let the state breathe. Sure. You know, you're living fight even within the home affairs officials. Mm. There are those who want to get to the top, but they sure. can't because they're not politically connected. Mm. You can't run a system like that. Get the best to the top quickly and let's make sure. I, I Let me close it like this. Mm. I sometimes say to myself, you know, if I played golf True. and you said you'll play against Tiger Woods, I don't want to talk about Tiger's life. I'll reflect on his mm. championship. True. And I said to Tiger, Tiger, here's some plastic clubs. You can figure out your way out. Now I'll use these proper ones. Sure. La Hutwaya. Mm. I will beat him all day, all yeah, the time. Absolutely. Because I've got the best clubs. Mm. And I'm not saying his talent is just the best club. Sure. It's just that you need the best group of South Africans working together to achieve the changes that True. we need. Once we do that, this country's latent potential tells me already we will fly. There's like, like I said, over one point three trillion US dollars looking mm. for investment. Mm. I'm saying bring it here because as the world is changing through climate change and all of those things. All that money means we can dominate. Absolutely. We are young, we are vibrant, we are in the continent of Africa. 1.4 billion people will be here in 2040. The median age is 23. Mm. My gosh, if I look at that, I think we are the next rising Absolutely. block. The next rising sun. We are it. So let's get our politics right. Sure. We can show the world this is where it's at. Musi, my brother. Nothing but love and respect for um, you. Likewise, likewise, yes, likewise. And I wish you all the best. We are home, yes, home sir. ground. Yes, sir. <laughs> I wish you, Bossa, and your entire team and Yadi Bossa, that even if uh, you are not president, yeah. that we understand that there is this excellence here that are ready to be put into the game. Right. If we have the right people in the match, there's no way we can't win. There's no way. My brother, I am such a big fan, and it's an honor to be here. And yes, I yes. just... Uh, likewise, likewise, I've admired your work. I'll continue to admire it, and I just let's get let's get let's get back to the intro and say let's get those diverse groups of South Africans dancing again. Absolutely. <laughs> um, he loves me, but I know that his uh, management don't because they've been <laughs> screaming for fifteen minutes. We are late. We are late. We are. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, representing Build One South Africa, Musi Maimane is about to leave the building. We've been coming to you from Discover TV. Uh, check them out. Um, we use our studios. It's, it's a lovely setup, man. They can set it up whichever way you want. We're part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out to Pezulu Works for the cinematography and all of our audio courtesy of Autista Flo Fraser and our guest, leader of Build One South Africa, Musi Maimani.
creative producer Kuvesh Mohan and the boss lady, show producer Kiletso Mudisa King. Email us waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a great week in spite of yourselves.